Okay, hello. This is the April HMIS user meeting. Um, hopefully, you should be able to see my screen. It says HMIS user meeting on it. If you can't, please um, write a comment and let us know. Um, this is Erin. Um, we also have Casey, my Elizabeth, and Adriana on the phone to do um, some updates as well. Um, and we're just going to jump into it. Um, so here is our agenda for today. Um, we wanted to give you a few updates as well as show you a couple new things since we are now live in our new um, HMIS software. Um, and we do want to have time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. Oh, we're not seeing the agenda slide. Hold on. <laughs> Can you see the agenda slide now? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so we're going to um, give you some updates and leave time at the end for questions. So you can ask us any questions you may, may have on the new Clarity software. Um, hopefully we can show you a few things. Um, and depending on what kind of questions we're getting, we may do a separate webinar just to answer all those questions. So um, let's get started. And um, Please enter in the chat box the name of your agency so we can track um, which agencies participated in the meeting. Okay, so um, Clarity Migration Update. Obviously, we are live as of April 5th. Yay! Um, um, thank you so much for everybody that um, put in the extra work and did the data correction um, to make this happen. Um, we're very excited with the new software and um, we keep figuring out new things and it, it keeps getting better. So hopefully you all feel the same way also. Um, so next up in the process is um, we are going to be working on the custom data migration now. So this includes any services that were not already in the data dictionary. Hold on, sorry. Hold on. Okay. Um, so we're working on the custom data migration. Uh, that includes any services that were not already in a HUD data dictionary. Um, so for any of you that are not receiving SSBF or RIE or PATH funding, um, your services are most likely not showing up in HMIS that you have provided from um, version six. The exception to that is um, any contact services or bed nights that you've provided. So we're working on migrating all of that in now. We're also working on migrating any case notes that you entered um, in the Azurex system, uh, documents, and other custom fields as well. And we're also working on migrating in the coordinated entry BI SPDAT questions and the housing preference questions that are currently being collected on um, the Google document that some of you may have experience with. Um, Tentatively, right now, we're thinking that um, services case notes in the CES is going to be, a, be available on June 1st. However, um, there's some questions that need to be answered specifically in re regards to coordinated entry and how much we want to include, where, when it makes sense to actually start using coordinated entry in HMIS because our grant is going to be ending soon, the grant year. Um, so we're probably going to have a separate meeting scheduled to talk about that. Um, and it'll probably be kind of a combination of the data meeting and the coordinated entry subcommittee meeting for those of you that have attended those um, to kind of work out some of those questions. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and let me stop really quick and look and see if there's any questions.
Okay, no questions yet. So um, just to briefly go over what the process is gonna be for the custom data migration. Um, we, so we just sent bit-focused um, exports for the coordinated entry data services and case notes. They're gonna review it and let us know if there's any um, corrections we need to make to the export. Then they're gonna do a test migration and we're gonna review that to make sure everything migrated over correctly. And then we will send them a final export and they will migrate it in. Um, so look out for more information on that. Um, we're still figuring out what other custom fields we wanna migrate over and as well as um, documents that may have been entered into ads to text so that data may not be available June 1st um, since we're still figuring out what exactly we're migrating over there. Um, I don't see any questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, reporting webinar. Uh, Casey, um, are you there? Oh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, can you, I share my screen? Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, so hopefully you guys have kind of looked at the reports available in Clarity so far. They are pretty cool. There are millions of them. So we're going to do a separate webinar just on reporting in Clarity because it was too much to cover in a user meeting. So that will be next Thursday from one to two. And we have this on our calendar. So we went over the calendar a couple user, user meetings ago, but I thought I'd just show you guys again in case some of you weren't here for that. So if you come to OCHMIS.org and scroll down in the sidebar, click on where it says HMIS calendar. This is where we're putting um, our webinar and meeting updates. So if you want to subscribe to this calendar so that you can have these all in whatever calendar you use, like Outlook or Gmail, you can just click the subscribe button here and pick whichever calendar you use then you will get updates um, in your calendar whenever we make an update to our calendar. So I just added this one yesterday. So if you've already subscribed to our calendar, you should see this in your calendar. Can you also show them really quick where the, the meeting minutes are? Yes. So the, we send out an email after each user meeting with a link to this page. So to find past user meeting minutes, you hover over news and click on user meeting minutes. And if it's a webinar, we have the minutes recording, the presentation, and other stuff if we need to. If it's in person, we just have the minutes and the PowerPoint presentation. So this will be updated later today. Okay. Don't see any questions. So we'll go to the next thing, which is sending client information to the help desk. Um, so this is one of the most exciting things about Clarity. It's super cool. Um, so you guys know in Adsys Tech, we had you send client identifiers and sometimes application IDs. But in Clarity, it's much easier. So on every page that you work on in Clarity, there is a unique URL that you can copy and paste into the help desk. And when we click on it, we'll be able to see exactly what you see. So this one is a link to the training site, so we don't show any client information. So I'm gonna click on it, and I'm not logged in, but when I log in, it will take me to where the link was pointing. So this is where um, I wanted to look at the client services, so it logged me in and took me right there. So anytime you have a problem in Clarity, like if you're looking at assessments, you can copy and paste the URL. This will take us right to the client. This is client number 13 and their program 31. This will take us right to their assessments. So that's the easiest way to let us know what you're looking at in Clarity. And if whatever issue you're having isn't necessarily uh, tied to one page or one screen, you can also always send us the client's identifier, which you will find on their profile tab right underneath their picture. And if you do send the, um, the ID 
if it's related to a program, please include that program name. Yeah. Too. So there aren't really application IDs in Clarity. So if you want to send us a unique identifier, we need to know the program name and the program start date, just in case that person has had multiple enrollments in that project. And Christine asked, do we add the link in the ticket system we submit? Do you add the link in the ticket? Yes. So when you, here, let's look at that really quick. So you would select your category, write your subject as usual, and then you can paste your link in the message. You can hyperlink it too if you want to be fancy. Um, yeah, and then we'll be able to see it. And that and that's okay because um, the you still have to log in when you click on the link. It'll yeah. require you to log. In. It doesn't take it won't take anybody else there if they don't have an account logged in. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, are you done? Yes. All right. All right. So training material. Um, Mai, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, so, um, just really quick, if you haven't already noticed, uh, we have a PDF copy of the HMS Part 230 training available on our OSA training site. Um, so, pretty much if you uh, click on the link and go to the OSA training site um, in the HMS Part 2, uh, there's a link where they click here for PDF copy of the material used in this training. It will pull up the PDF. A copy of this training. That way you can either put it as your favorite or print it for those of you who prefer a paper copy. And then that's it. Um, not seeing any questions. All right. Um, <clears throat> knowledge base update. Okay. Okay, so really quick on that also, uh, we've removed all knowledge base articles that are related to version 6 in Happy Fox. So, and then right now we are currently in the process of creating and updating any uh, knowledge base articles um, for the new Clarity HMIS, which uh, we'll publish them soon. And then, so with that being said, if you guys have any uh, suggestion on anything that you guys would like us to uh, create an article about, please send uh, them to the HMIS help desk. Any questions? And, and also, the there are a few knowledge base articles that we've already put up in regards to Clarity, like the how to log in. Um, we did one on what happens if you add a client to a household accidentally. Um, so you can definitely start searching. Um, and if you don't see an article on something that you would like to see an article on, uh, you can enter a ticket with the help desk and we can add that for you. Um, not seeing any questions. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, are you there? Yes. Okay. Hi, all. So, um, something that's different in the new Clarity HMIS that the APR is that the HPR and the CAPER reports must be converted to CSV. So this means that you do not directly download the CSV format of your APR or CAPER from the HMIS, but um, rather you convert it to that format outside of HMIS. So as a reminder, the file that you upload to the SAGE repository must be in the CSV zip file format. So you must take this conversion step to get the right kind of file for your upload. The process goes like this. You will run the APR and CAPER report in HMIS and then download them as Excel files. 
Um, then you will convert them on a APR ESG CAPER CSC extract tool that's also run by Clarity. Um, so it's a website that's run by Clarity, but it's not inside of the HMIS. So we will have a knowledge base article about this available um, that will take you through the steps and uh, we'll also have the link to the extract tool, but we can do a quick demo of it right now. And I just wanted to make a quick aside that the SSVF and RIA uploads do not need to be converted. They are downloaded directly from the Clarity HMIS in the correct upload format. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to use one of the agencies as an example so that we can get an actual report. So the first thing that you do is you click on the launch pad icon and go to the reports main page. Then you expand the HUD reports uh, report library and you either choose the ESG caper or the APR report. So these reports are, um, they can be used to review your data before you get your final report. Um, but for now, we're just gonna do the final report and I'll use the APR as an example. So you click this run link and then you can leave these as default and then choose your program type. And then I always choose active programs for the program status so that you only get the programs that are um, relevant at the moment. Then choose your program. And another thing that's different is that these reports are not really based on your funding source, they're based on your program. So um, you would just select that. Then you enter your, your report range by clicking the calendar icon. These double arrow arrows will change the year at the top. So right now we're in April 2018 and then it changes to 2017 if you use a double arrow. And the single arrows will change to month. So you choose your correct date range. And then you have to make sure that you download it in Excel. So you'll um, click the button next to Excel and then click OK. So this will send it to the report queue manager and then once it's ready, it will come, it'll be available here. So I already have one ready. So I'll just show you that one. So you'll get um, an Excel um, an Excel sheet with your CSV, with, which will be then be converted to your CSV and you will use this extract tool to convert. So the first thing you need to do is choose which type of report you're converting. So it's either the CAPER or the APR. And then you can choose if you want the zip file emailed to you or downloaded. So I'm gonna choose download. Then you either click the select file link to um, place that Excel file in there or you can just drop it. So let's see, let's just, I'm going to just drop it in here. And then you see that it's um, been uploaded. You click process and you'll be giving the CSV zip file. So those are the steps that you have to take to get your CSV. And that's it for the demo. Okay. All right. Um, we have two questions about how do they get to the Extract Tool website. I'm going to create a knowledge base article, which should be out but with the minutes today, um, and it'll have the link to that Extract Tool. But then also, if you just go on to our um, Help Desk knowledge base and then type in CSV, you'll the article will come up, and then you can click on the link there. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep moving. Hick and Pit. Okay, so an update on the Hick and Pit process. All the Hick and Pit data is finalized and sent to agencies for confirmation. 
We did not receive requests for corrections to the data, so it will be submitted as is. And that data that we sent to you um, was the information see that um, the information that agency representatives provided in the form of the HIC and PIT answer forms and the PIT reports. And we just formatted that data so that it could be sent to HUD. So all of this information will be submitted um, to HUD by the end of this month, which is less than a week away. Thereafter, the HIC beds will be updated in HMIS, so the inventory associated with your projects will be up to date. And the next HIC and PIT related information that you can look out for is the PIT report, which will give an overview of the current homeless population in our COC, and this should be available in May. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for the work on the HIC and PIT this year, and um, I appreciate all your responses and diligence in getting the data finalized. Um, HMIS Clarity Forms. Adriana, are you there? Uh, hold on just a second. Okay. Adriana? Hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, okay. HMIS Clarity Forms. So since we're using this brand new, very cool system, we also have new HMS intake and exit forms for all project types and funding sources. So as usual, you can find them on our website under the document section. So please check them out. And if you have any questions or any comments, let us know. We'd really appreciate all your feedback. Uh, what else? Oh, there's two things I would like to point out about the forms and basically about the difference that we have in comparison to the forms that we had with Stack. The first one is that for non federally funded projects now need to collect disability questions. So this means that uh, you will have all these questions listed in the general intake and the exit forms, which are the forms that are utilized by this type of project. So this is like a very big uh, difference that we have. And some of you are already familiar with this. Another one is that in the profile page, we have veteran information questions for all veteran clients. But if you, unless you work in a SSBA project, you don't need to collect this information because this, uh, this data element is just for SSBF projects. So for non-SSBF veteran clients, uh, the option would be, since we cannot bypass these questions, the option would be to select data not collected for all of these questions. And if you need to select the year, enter the military or separate it, you can just select, you can just enter a zero and that would allow you to continue with your intake process. So is there any questions about this? I don't see any yet. So just to recap, non-federally funded projects need to collect disability questions and veteran information questions in the profile page are just for SSBF projects, so only the SSBF projects in the form would have those questions listed. So oh, the, another thing. Mm -hmm. If a client is a veteran, um, mm -hmm. you will see other questions show up that are not required if you're not SSBF. You will see that. Mm -hmm. But Sorry. you can say data not collected and it will not impact negatively impact your data quality. Yeah, exactly, correct. You just, uh, you see them in the system, but you don't see them in the forms because we didn't want to confuse you with that. Another thing is that we're working currently on the Spanish intake and exit forms. So we're working on that and probably we're going to uh, up upload them like in a couple of weeks. All right. Um, anything else on this slide? Uh, nope. No, if there's any questions, that's nope. Okay, another cool thing that we did is that uh, they, we have translated the client consent form into Spanish. So you can also find this in the document section of our website under privacy, uh, as you can see there. The only thing here is that the Spanish version is not embedded in HMS. So we cannot use the electronic signature for Spanish speaking clients. Uh, you would need to then print the form and have the client read the form have the client uh, sign the form manually and then scan it and upload it in HMS. So it's still a pretty simple process. We just have to do one extra step. 
and yeah, that, that would be for a Spanish uh, client consent form. Is there any questions about this? Uh, I'm not seeing any yet. So we'll move on and come back if we need to. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, we have shared all the information that we wanted to share today. Um, so we wanted to give you all an opportunity to give us your feedback on um, how you're feeling about our new software, if there's anything specific you want to um, see that, that's fairly easy that we can show right now. Um, if not, we can schedule something separate to show you that um, and just give you a chance to ask a question. Is it required to upload the HMIS consent form to Clarity? So the uh, the reason that it was set it's been set up that way is so that you either um, upload the consent form or have the client sign the form within Clarity is to ensure that the the client's consent is correct. Um, with when we were in Access Tech. Um, there was really no way to verify whether or not a client's consent level was accurate because their consent wasn't linked to the form at all. So this, this was something that we added in order to um, make sure that the clients were, their data was being shared appropriately based on whether or not they signed the consent form. Um, another question, where do I input the HUD questions for new enrollment? i.e. location prior to housing length of stay. Um, just need to pull it up. Create a new enrollment. Um, let me change my agency real quick. Okay. So when you have your client um, on the programs page, you'll see a list of projects available for your agency. Um, once you enroll them, you'll be taken straight to the program entry screen where all the questions are. So you've got types of residence, length of stay, all the disability questions. Um, and then once they've been saved, they are available under the enrollment tab, so you can review them. Um, and if so, if you want to review the questions for a client that already has them completed, you after searching for your client, go to the programs page, edit next to the program name, and then go to the enrollment tab, and you can see them there. And also, for those of you that are uh, managers, you should be able to see the delete trash can here. So you can remove the client from your project. Um, users should not have that access because we wanted to make sure that um, someone was kind of overseeing it and making sure that the, the correct enrollments were deleted. So that's why not everybody has access to that. Um, so right now it should only be agency administrators. 
and Erin, um, I ISIS entered a ticket saying that some of her enrollments had the delete icon and some didn't. I have a ticket in with Clarity asking why, because there's um, no reason we can see why some of the enrollments at her agency have the delete icon and some don't. So I will get back to ISIS on that and then we'll probably write a knowledge base article if it's something that isn't like a an error. Okay. Um, the, for those of us that use paper forms, is there an upload tool from PIC file that can be used or do you have access to pads for us to use for intake? Um, there isn't anything right now that automatically uploads the paper forms in for you. Um, in regards to pads, um, I'll have to ask because I thought at one point there might have been or they were thinking about it, but I'll, I can check in and see if that's still something that we're considering. Um, but if you're using paper forms, you would have to manually, manually data, data enter them into Clarity. Um, uh, some have trash can for some and not others. We talked about that. Um, if a client wasn't imported from version six to Clarity, how should I submit a ticket? I have no identifier number since the client profile is not in Clarity. All other members of the household were imported except for the head of household. Um, if you don't have an ID number, Stephanie, um, you can call us and give us the client's name and we can look that up for you and see what happened and why it wasn't migrated over. Um, depending on what the issue is, it could be that it might be easier for you just to re-enter that client. Um, unless it's, it's a lot of clients that are missing, then it might be a migration issue, but if it's just one client, it might be easier for you to just to manually re-enter that one. But um, definitely give us a call and we can look at that, um, that case for you. Um, when we add an additional household member to a current enrollment, are we going to have to submit a ticket every time or is there a way to merge them without? Um, you should be able to, um, was that Adriana that had this ticket? I'm trying to remember, hold on for a second. Hello? Hello. Yes, uh, no, you don't need to, you don't need to contact us to merge them. You will need to uh, enroll them when you need to enroll them together. So, for example, if you're enrolling the, the, the head of household, then you will need to go to the manage. Hold on, let me see here. So, the way it works right now is so we have Mickey Mouse. Um, I would have to go back and put in a new the new client. Um, and then it's easier to do it from your, who you want your head of household to be. You would go to manage and you could add mini there. Mm -hmm. You put in the start date and then, um, so now they're in a household together. If Mickey was already enrolled, um, you would have to go to the, enrollment page and add mini on the new date. Do 
you have anything you want to add, Adriana? No, we are actually working on a knowledge-based article on that. So soon we're going to, probably today or tomorrow, we're going to send like a step-by-step -step tool for, for that, a step for that. Okay. Is that something that we can include in the minutes? Uh, yeah, I, would, I think so. Okay. In Adsys Tech, we had an option for different K intervals, and in Clarity, it is populating as monthly. Will we need to go back and calculate income of the system to a monthly number? Um, so for any new clients that you're putting in, yes, definitely make sure that you're calculating it on a monthly basis. Um, anything that was migrated in um, should have been converted to monthly. So like if in Adsys Tech, it was yearly. Um, it'll divide that by month for you. Um, so you shouldn't, you should only have to worry about that for new people going forward. Um, we also did notice that there are some situations um, where income, it says, yes, I have income, but then for all the income options, uh, like maybe one selected, but there's no amount or they say, no, I didn't have income, but one of the income sources is selected and there is an amount, so they don't match up. Um, and we are working with BitFocus on um, running a script to correct that, because for those of you working on um, APRs, that it, that'll come up as an error on your APR. So we're working on that with BitFocus. Um, all right. So, Amanda, um, I'm going to save for now to wait for that knowledge base article and see if that answers your question, because um, I know Adriana was working with you on it specifically, and then if that doesn't, then um, you can put in a ticket and we can look at it again. Um, we have noticed that when we have clients who have ended their participation with an effective date of 4.30, I'm unable to exit them prior to that date. The effective date is in the future. I don't know if I'm understanding this. Hold on. Um, Um, Christine, I unmuted you. Um, I'm not sure what your question is. Can you talk me through it? Maybe she doesn't have them. Christine? Okay. Um, I try to exit today for an effective date of 430. Oh, so she's saying she's trying to exit a client today whose exit date is on 430, but she is unable to. Um, we can ask them about it, but I think that you shouldn't be able to exit people in the future because you don't necessarily always know when that's going to be exactly. So to prevent data quality issues, that that might be restricted, but we can confirm with them on that one um, and let you know on that. Can you give us an update on the clients missing the disability question and DB question? Um, Rose, was that that the data didn't migrate? or that the fields are missing in in HMIS. Um, I, I can double check on that one. Um, I think we're still waiting for a response from BitFocus. Um, but what, what Family Forward is saying is they have some data that didn't migrate in, so 
I think we're still waiting for a response from Fifth Focus. I can ask for an update today and let you know. Um, should we just go back and enter it? Um, if it's not very many clients, you you might want to just go back and enter it. Um, if it's a lot, we we can look into it and, and get a response from them. Um, but usually, if they have to meet, re migrate data, it takes a few days. So um, you, you'll have to kind of assess how many it is and if it makes more sense for you to just do it yourself. Um, but we can I can check in with BitFocus. How do we reactivate clients? So that um, I'm trying to think of the best way to show that. Hold on. All right. Okay, so Wonder Woman is exited. You can see your exit dates 412 here. Um, if I want to reactivate her, I go to her enrollment, go to the exit screen, and I just delete the exit date. and save the changes. That's it. Now the exit date is gone. Um, and if you if you reactivated them just because they shouldn't be exited, then that's all you have to do. But if you needed to reactivate to make any data changes or anything, make sure you go back in and put that exit date in. Otherwise, they're just going to keep showing up as active. So don't forget that step. For minors that have income, the income option. Hold on. For minors that have income, the income option does not appear for them. Are we just to indicate the household income for the head of household under other other incomes so that we can type them before? So in the data dictionary, um, income is only required for head of household and adults. So that's why it's not showing up for the children. So. Um, and that, and in the data quality report cards, that won't be that won't hurt you if your children don't have income entered. So, yeah, you would just put in the income for any of your head of households or adults. If they're getting child support, then you would put it under the the adult that's receiving the child support, not under the child. Um, who has access to reactivating clients? So because this is just a matter of delete, deleting the end date from the page, any user can reactivate an enrollment. Um, whether you, whether or not you want to share that information with your, your users is your choice. Um, luckily, it's, it's an easy fix because it's just a date. You don't lose any of the data on this page. Um, and when you run reports, you can see who's who's active, so you can resolve it. But right now, any user has access. Is there a way we can hide our old programs that we are no longer using without deleting the data completely? Yes. Yeah, so, um, Georgia, you guys are kind of in a unique situation because we are in the middle of migrating data from your um, incorrect projects to your correct projects, so that's why you're seeing stuff that you shouldn't be seeing. Um, but if there are other agencies that have projects that are no longer running, um, let us know and we can deactivate them for you. Um, and eventually, Georgie, yours will be gone too. It's just that we're still um, 
trying to get your clients into the correct places. So that's why you're still seeing um, those projects. All right. I think, oh. All right, so my questions have stopped. Um, Adriana wants to show something that um, will probably help with Amanda's question earlier, so I'm gonna let her share her screen. So Adriana, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Okay, Amanda. So I was talking about the managed clients. So, for example, for this client, you go to the profile page. You need to make sure that uh, her members are here in the household management. Uh, so you click on the manage, and then if you need to add any other member, you can click this add button, or you can click this join button. So if you However, if you want to enroll a specific client into the project, because they are not enrolling the project yet, they are just, you're just here forming the, the household. So if this client is already enrolling a project, you go to the programs tab, and for example, click here in this ESG program. So in her household, only her is enrolling the program, but not the other members. So you click here in program group members, you click the add button, and then if you want to enroll only one client, you can do that. So for example, if you want to only enroll the fake client, you click on him, or if you want to enroll all of them, you can also do that, and then you click on enroll. And that will prompt you to answer the, the entry questions. So here we can see that, for example, for this fake client, you can answer all these questions. So this is the way that you don't need to merge the clients. You just have to go to the profile, the programs page of the client who is already enrolled in the program. So as I said, we are gonna send uh, knowledge base articles with these steps, but I just wanted to, to show you this. Is there any questions? Um, and can you go back to, because if you so if you look on the right side where it says program type enrolling in programs, so that's showing you the two that there are two people that you're enrolling now. Uh -huh. um, and then when you went to Lee's page, mm -hmm. um, it was showing for the oh, for the oh. program enrollment mm -hmm. um, so that, it was, that it only included him by himself, even though he was technically in a household with. Exactly. So if you're, so if you're on the profile page and your household members are here on the right, so this mm -hmm. is who's in the house. Exactly. If you go to the program page, and, you and then you select the program. The program. Mm -hmm. You'll see that he's enrolled program type individual. That means he's alone. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how you know if you're confused about whether or not they're enrolled. Um, it would say group and, and the number of people if they were enrolled together. So that's when you would add them using the steps that Adriana mentioned. And here we can see that, for example, this client is only is enrolled alone because we don't have no active, we have no active members here because we I actually didn't complete the whole enrollment process. But but again, you just click this add button and then select the client that you want to enroll. You don't need to select all of them. You could have different configurations of, of members for each program. So then you select enroll, and then you answer the question. So in this way, you don't have to uh, submit a ticket with us asking for, for us to merge the client enrollment. All right. So, and and like we said, that that'll be a knowledge base article. Um, but just so you have the steps. Um, other than that, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, if you haven't already, please put in the chat the name of your agency so we know who's here. Um, and if you have any other questions, I'll give it another minute. If you want to type them in, 
um, I have, well, I have one one thing I want to add. Uh, this thing, I, this process I just showed is only applicable for a uh, project whose uh, focus code is household. So, for example, for Armory projects, this wouldn't be applicable. You would need to have separated programming roles. That's not a thing anymore. Don't even mention that. There are, don't confuse them. That's not a thing anymore. <laughs> but just for an Armory clients, that would work. It's the same step. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. I think that's it. So um, we're going to end the webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for your, your positive feedback. We're so glad that you are liking Clarity as much as we are. And we um, are really excited to show you new things that are um, that we've been learning. So at future user meetings. Um, and if there's something specific you want us to go over, uh, feel free to shoot us uh, a help desk ticket letting us know so we can be sure to include it in the next meeting. Um, thanks everybody. Have a great day.